In the last video, we looked at the double slit experiment involving electrons and we saw some peculiar behavior, some strange behavior of these electrons. We saw that if these electrons went through one slit, then they behaved like particles and they took on this shape that, that is the shape of a particle um, that lands on the detector. And then we said that if there are two slits, then it behaves like a wave. Then to eliminate the possibility that this wave was created due to interference, we sent one electron at a time, but we still saw the same pattern. Then another thing was is that we could never predict where the electron is going to land with 100% certainty. We could guess um, based on chances, but we could never predict it with 100% certainty. Einstein didn't like this idea as all, at all. And I'm sure many of you have heard this quote by Einstein. He said that, you know, God doesn't play dice. God doesn't work on probabilities. God works deterministically, like how it should be in the classical world. And then someone told Einstein, don't tell God what to do, right? So nature is how nature is. We, we have to understand it, but we have to understand it according to reality right so if reality is telling us that we cannot predict it with 100 percent certainty then that is what it is and i can tell you that this experiment has been repeated many times um, and the results have always been the same so it has nothing to do with experimental error it has nothing to do with the fact that our um that perhaps our experiments are not going right. It has nothing to do with that. It is an inherent part of nature. Okay, now moving on. So this, this, this had a peculiar effect of showing us that electrons could behave, behave like waves and they could behave like particles. So now the question is, what's the true nature of, of electrons, what's the true nature of light, because they both give the same results in, in this experiment. Okay, so I'm gonna give a timeline of all the experiments that were done that led us to this point, and then I'll explain um, the issue and I'll solve it, and I'll tell you which, which scientist um, came up with a solution for this problem. So we're gonna start off with Newton. Newton, from his prism experiment, he said that light is a particle. Then Huygens came, and actually Huygens actually said this before Newton, but we'll 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 just discuss him now. Um, he said that um, so he said that light. So sometimes I'm going to be talking about light. Sometimes I'm going to be talking about electrons. So don't get confused by that, but just know that they're interchangeable right that the nature of light is very much the same as the nature of an electron so so we'll be sometimes talking about light sometimes we'll be talking about electrons as you know light is made up of particles called photons right so you can think of that as the analog to electrons that we've been discussing so anyways Huygens said that light is a wave because and this weird sign means because so Huygen thought that light was a wave because he saw an interference pattern. Okay. Then came along Maxwell. And he too said that light is a wave. And I'm going to represent a wave like this because I'm too tired of writing it out. So Maxwell said that light is a wave. Then came Einstein. And Einstein did the photoelectric effect. And basically he concluded that light is a way, is a particle. So what the photoelectric effect is, I'll briefly explain it. You have, you have some sort of metal um, and the photoelectric effect was actually discovered accidentally. Um, so it is, it was very curious People couldn't explain the photoelectric effect until Einstein came about and he explained it. But this is what the photoelectric effect is. If you shine some light with an appropriate energy, 
then what it does is it hits the surface of the metal and it ejects an electron out with some kinetic energy K. So that is very weird. How is it that we have light that's basically throwing out an electron from the metal? How is it that light, something that you see all around you, how is it able to knock out an electron? Well, Einstein said that it is only possible if we thought of light as having uh, as being made up of distinct particles and he named them photons and he said that these interact with these electrons and they result in the removal of electrons so there's one electron removed per photon okay so based on this einstein thought that okay light or i mean yeah light is a particle and then the last person i'm going to talk about is compton and then Compton gave further support of the idea that, yes, electrons are particles. Compton actually wanted to prove Einstein wrong. So he did experiments, um, he did many experiments, um, and it turns out that in the end he realized that actually Einstein was right, that light did have a particle nature to it. So what, Einstein, what Compton did is, he, he said that if light comes with some energy initial or let's say some initial wavelength we won't talk about energy yet so let's say light comes with some initial wavelength and that light hits an electron then it turns out that the collision causes a change in wavelength of the light okay so basically it, it, it kind of shows like, you know, if you're playing, if you're playing pool, you, you basically, um, like, I'm sure many of you have played the game billiards. So it, he, uh, Compton said that this is kind of like that situation in which one billiard ball hits the other billiard ball. Um, and then the other billiard ball goes flying somewhere else. So he said that this change in wavelength can be thought of like that. But the only way you can think of light being like a billiard ball and an electron being like a billiard ball is if you assume that they're particles. Because surely light, like if we think of light um, in its traditional sense, it, it's not, it doesn't seem like a billiard ball. But Compton said that for this experimental result to be explained we have to consider light to be like a billiard ball so as you can see there are many experiments that were giving contradicting results so it was very perplexing for the scientists until mr d Broglie came or d Broy. i'm really sorry i don't know how to pronounce his name it's been very long since i've been taking this courses but i've never really learned to say his name because everyone really pronounces it differently so if someone knows the correct pronunciation please type it in the comment section so mr Broglie was actually um he was actually from the royal family so this is extraneous but he was from the royal family and this guy was actually um, in the humanities before and then he switched on to physics and when he was writing his PhD thesis, he wrote his PhD thesis on the principle of wave-particle duality. So Mr. Bro Broglie said that, hey, instead of thinking of the fact that, you know, is light or electrons a particle or a wave, how about we think that they have both characteristics in the sense that, you know, um, objects, let's just say objects, objects are wave and particle-like, depending on the situation. So there's no classical analog to this. Uh, in the real world, you see you you don't see anything that has a wave and a particle-like nature. So it's very hard to imagine wave-particle duality. So it's something you kind of have to um, take as an axiom or something that's just it comes out naturally from observations. Um, so it is slightly hard to imagine this. But here. 
Um, think of it like this. Think of the fact that you're in a dark room and there's a car in the dark room, but you don't know it's a car. So you start feeling your way around and then you touch the tire um, and you're like, oh, okay, maybe maybe this is this is made out of plastic, whatever object this is. Then you go and then you touch the light, um, you know, the headlight of the car and then you're like, oh, this is kind of like glass. So then you say, okay, so so then you say that, oh, this this object is a glass and this object is a is a plastic as well. But when you turn on the lights, you see that it's actually a car. So it's kind of like that, that scientists were in the dark um, and they were feeling around light but they didn't really get the whole picture they got parts of the picture um, but then when the light turned on quote unquote when mr de broglie came he turned on the light and then scientists were like oh you know it has both properties there's there's many pictures um you know you could look at pictures online that that have a dual nature they 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 basically in one picture there's there's two images there's one picture but there's two images depending on the perspective you take um you you see you see one of those two images so you can look that up online um i i won't really go through that here but it, it hopefully helps illustrate the idea of duality the the aspect that things have dual nature sometimes so what we'll do is we'll come up with a simple derivation that de broy came up with um to explain this idea so he started off with this he said okay well if electron if if objects have a wave particle duality then their energy as a wave should equal to their energy as a particle. So, as we know, the energy of a wave is h mu, and the energy of a particle is mc squared. Okay? We can rewrite mu as c over lambda, because that's the relation nu is equal to c over lambda or or c is equal to nu times lambda so this is the relation anyways so this c cancels out with one of the c's in the c squared and what you can do is you can solve for lambda and what you get is you get h over mc and this is the formula for the wavelength of a particle. Okay? So this is a restrictive case where I say that v, the velocity of this object, is equal to the speed of light. But in, in, in life, particles don't travel at the speed of light. So I'll make a slight modification to this formula and rewrite it as h over mv. Um, and as you know, mv is equal to momentum. So I can also rewrite lambda as h over p. So basically, you're relating the two properties of a wave and a particle. Remember, I told you in the start that particles can be described by their position and their momentum, and waves are primarily described by their wavelength. So this relation shows us mathematically wave-particle duality. So you might be asking, why don't we see waves in our scale, right? Why don't I look like a wave? Why don't you look like a wave? And the answer for that is this. So the, the mass for large objects like us is very high. So if you divide this number by a very, very high number on the bottom, then it turns out that lambda will, will give us a small value, right? Think about it if you divide 10 to the minus 34 um, by a very large number. You divide it by a very large number and you get a small number in return. So the whole, um, the idea, you know, I, I, can, I can even show you easier math. Um, let's say 20 divided by 100. Compare that to 20 divided by 1,000 um, and so on. So you see if you increase this number, the overall number decreases. So it turns out 
that since our mass is very large, the wavelengths we see are very, very small. They're almost negligible. So we don't, we don't see a wave associated with you or me or anyone. But in the, in the world of uh, atoms and electrons, um, then the mass is, in, mass is very small in value. So mass is small in value, so you have, a, you have a relatively large wavelength that can be observed. So with this, I want to end the video on, on this wave particle nature that De Broglie came up with. And in the next video, we'll discuss some implications this has.